I'm in one of the coldest places in Canada, Edmonton, Alberta, to help two partners open an authentic Brazilian steakhouse. We're in business! This is not three weeks away. Nah, we can do it. There's a fine line between confidence and delusion. We're in the weeds, right? Yeah. Fast, 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 fast. Do my hands move slow. Do my hands move fast. If the business fails, there is a possibility that I can be deported. It looks like a bad Brazilian wedding. This is your darkest moment. <sighs> I've been in the restaurant biz all my life. I've had stunning success and crushing failure. You think owning a restaurant's easy? It's brutal. But I know what it takes to make it. Rookies don't. So here's my mission. I'm going to give their restaurants a fighting chance. And I'll do anything to make that happen. Because if they fail, I fail. And failure is not on the menu. I'm in one of the coldest places in Canada, Edmonton, Alberta, to help two partners, Oscar and Joao, open their first restaurant called Papa. It's right downtown, and they thought it'd be an ideal location for a steakhouse. A steakhouse in Edmonton? Haven't they got enough of those here? But Oscar and Joao say it's not just any steakhouse, it's a Brazilian steakhouse. Well, there's no better food anywhere than Brazilian barbecue. Just the beef itself and the salt, just the flavor of the charcoal, it just works like magic. It's about meat and more meat and more meat, and it's all you can eat. I've never experienced it, but I hear it's amazing. We have passion for this thing. I'm sure that Edmontonians are going to come here and they're going to have a very good time here. You don't get a waiter, you get a gaucho. And these guys look like they just exited from a bullfight. They're highly skilled and grill the meat themselves over a charcoal flame. A typical night will feature many cuts of beef, chicken, lamb, and pork, and that's your only option. Meat and a giant salad bar. The gauchos march around the room carving as much as you want at the table. If you love meat, this is heaven. If you don't, it ain't for you. All my friends and all my family, they tell me all the time that I'm crazy. What's crazy about this story is that it took a guy who isn't Brazilian to come up with the idea. Oscar was born in El Salvador, but grew up here in Edmonton. When he was 25, he went to Brazil on a business student exchange. The third day after I arrived in Brazil, I went to a churrascaria, a Brazilian steakhouse, and that's where I fell in love with it for the first time. I ate there for four hours. He was hooked and immediately hatched a plan to open a Brazilian steakhouse back home in Edmonton. So he ditched business school and got a job in Brazil as a gaucho to learn the trade. Not exactly what mom and dad had in mind. Even to this day, I think last week my mom asked me if I was still sure that I wanted to open Pampa. <laughs> Oscar had no work papers, so he worked for free. He had the idea, and now he had the skills, but he had no cash. That's for Pampa. And that's where Joao comes in. A friend of a friend, Joao owned a large grocery store in Brazil. But it turns out he secretly dreamed of owning a restaurant. I never thought about barbecue. But the way that he loved it, that made me love it too. Joao wanted in. He sold his store, and together they convinced friends of his in Brazil to throw in their life savings too. Next thing you know, they've raised $800,000. Oscar then found something else he loved in Brazil. Susana. Six years after he first tasted Brazilian barbecue, Oscar had money, a new wife, and a business partner. So all three of them picked up, left Brazil, and headed north. I love him, and he has like a great dream, and I'm here to help him. When they got to Edmonton, they quickly discovered it was going to be harder than they thought. They planned on bringing five authentic gauchos from Brazil, but their visas got rejected. So we have very little time to train locals in the art of making Brazilian barbecue. They found a location and started paying $14,000 a month in rent. They thought it would only need a quick remodel. But to make an authentic Brazilian steakhouse, they realized they'd have to gut it and start from scratch. And now it wasn't a renovation anymore, that was actually construction. And so our budget just went through the roof. Well, we've been paying him in 50,000 increments, right? I think it's reasonable to keep it at that. They needed more cash and the banks wouldn't touch them. So Oscar turned to his parents for another 200 grand. 
Yes, we are going to help him. We are going to mortgage the house. We are going to give whatever we, we can give to him. The money they got from mom and dad tied them over, but now it's gone. They need to open, and they think they can do it in three weeks? There's a lot of work left to do. And from what I can tell, no more cash. What I need to know from them is what corners we can cut to actually get this restaurant open. At this point, I put all the eggs in one basket, and this is my basket. It's not just a dream. It's something that has to happen. We need his help. Oscar, Joao, hey guys. Hi, David. I found it. <laughs> Good to see you. Oscar. And Joao. Joao, okay, yeah. I pronounced that correctly? Yeah, it's perfect. That's so, a big space here, huh? Every time I turn around, there's another room, <laughs> there's another hall. There's no one in Edmonton no. doing this. Either you're the smartest or the craziest. <laughs> We believe that we are the smartest one. It's an amazing experience all around. It's uh, an amazing salad bar, which is what we have, you see here, which we brought from Brazil. We shipped this bad boy uh, via plane and truck all the way from southern Brazil to Edmonton. Wait a minute, did you say truck? <laughs> you drove a salad bar from Brazil? And that came obviously from Brazil as well. But we couldn't get this stuff here. I can see how you spent a million bucks. You're, you're putting in fire suppression system, you stripped it down to the floor, you've transported pieces of equipment halfway around the planet. I quit everything in Brazil to, to put this business here in Canada. And if the business fails, there is a possibility that I can be deported. I have to start from scratch in there if I fail. Would not be awesome. No. <laughs> no, not at all. You know, you told me you want to be open in three weeks. Oh, we are. Oh, we will be. There's no ifs and, and buts about it. There's a fine line between confidence and excitement and delusion. I open restaurants. I walk in and I can smell whether a restaurant's ready. And guess what? No smell in here. Ain't ready. I smell drywall dust and grease from a pipe cutter. I smell a construction site. Oscar's probably one of the best I've ever seen because he's convinced a lot of people to put up a lot of money to get this thing open. I'm just here to help you a bit with reality. The head check to say, holy crap, three weeks, I have to have this restaurant open. My relationship with my parents depends on it. My relationship with some of my best friends for 20 years depends on it. I have to have this restaurant open. What do you feel right now? Actually, I don't feel calm at all by any means, no. Not the way you just put it, anyways. Okay, how, how do you feel right now, from three minutes ago when I walked in? Kind of heavy, huh? Heavy, yeah. tense, tight. Yeah, yeah. Congratulations, guess what? You're in the restaurant business, and you're in the restaurant business right now. That sick to your stomach feeling, that tightness in your chest, those two things will get those doors open. For the first time, my confidence and optimism has been shaken. For the first time in six years, everyone has always just been positive and supportive, and he just went Tomorrow morning, you, you, and I'll be here at 8 o'clock and we're gonna come up with a strategy. We got a lot of work to do, boys. A lot of work. These guys are sharp and they've done the research, but they're operating without any sense of urgency. They've spent a million dollars already and they've gotta get open and get some cash coming in. The way that they've shaken me made me think much more serious about all the responsibilities that I have. I don't know if they're gonna be ready in three weeks. I've arrived at Pampa a bit early because I want to find out when these trades are going to be done. You guys are lucky, Cole? What are you guys doing? Yeah. How far away are you from uh, being done? Oh, it's going to be at least a week. Okay. okay. It's going to be tight. Yeah, it'll be tight. Tight? Hey, man. What's your name? Bob. Hey, Bob. I don't see a restaurant being able to swing the doors open in three weeks. There is a lot of uh, prep work on the floors. There is a lot of painting involved. You're in charge. What's your name? Dan. Dan, Dan, I'm Dan, Dave. Dan, How you doing, man? What's happening with the floors? All the plumbing under the floors here, everything, all the drains is still, uh, you know, there's three weeks of work under the floor alone in this building. This timeline is tight, and I know that the only way to make sure a restaurant gets built out fast is to throw money at it. I have to get a handle on their cash situation, and fast. Someone said you guys were here. What is this, this 
charcoal. This one comes from South America, actually. You brought charcoal in from South America. I need you to come clean. Who hasn't been paid? Is there any big trades? Is all your millwork paid for? Part of it. Part. Yeah. So you're outstanding on your millwork. Kitchen supplies equipment. All your kitchen supplies. Uh, only about half. half. Yeah. Half is Part. being paid. Yeah. The floor is not paid. That's already. not paid. No. Enough. How much is the floor? 36, 37. 36, 37,000? Shit. Okay. This is worse than I thought. I'm in Edmonton at Papa, and there's a ton of work left to do and not enough time. And I've just found out that the owners, Oscar and Joao, haven't paid all their bills. And there's no way to get their trades to work more and faster unless they start paying them. Forks in the road. I'm gonna have to pull out every trick in the book to get this restaurant open. So when we run out of money, the fork in the road has changed. Is there a cheaper alternative? I don't know. No, you lose no, the authenticity no, 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 no. of the yeah. whole concept of the whole Brazilian steakhouse experience. It's going to be to look cheap. Okay. So no, it, for anyways, from my standpoint, I don't think that we can change anything. You're already, what, a million in? Yep. Right? What do you need? Anywhere from 350 to 400,000 more, David. That 400 grand ensures what? No change. So I want to know, where are we getting 400 grand from? Partners, can you dip into your partners? Not for much more than that, though. Maybe 100? 100 grand from the silent partners. My parents are talking to the bank this week, um, and they're trying to get me another 50. We have a shortfall of a quarter of a million dollars. What's your biggest fixed expense? Probably rent. Landlord. So your landlord, what you say is, I know I pay 14 grand a month rent, but I need to borrow on that. Increase my rent per month on the back end. Landlords are very emotionless. It's just about dollars and cents. Refinance, option. If you've bought expensive kitchen equipment, fridges, ice makers, coffee makers, financing it. But what you're gonna end up doing is paying five times what you pay for that piece of equipment. Okay. That's suicide, David. I mean, having to pay very that, high, that interest rate that high, it's unacceptable. Have you ever rolled dice? Have you ever gambled? No. no. Well, you're gambling right now. People gamble to win and win big. This restaurant that you've invested a million dollars could make you a million dollars a year. But it's all for nothing if we don't get the doors open. The other one is assume another partner. Then Absolutely it's fine. not. We've been working on this for six, eight years. And you're going to gonna waltz in. Yeah. You might as well scratch that option out because I'm not letting anybody in. What's your feelings? It's the same. We we don't agree to have any, any another partner in this at this point. Yeah. yeah. You got a grill, you got charcoal. But we don't have a restaurant to cook it in. You know, it's been a sacrifice with my wife. <clears throat> a sacrifice more for my career. Um, a sacrifice for my parents. Um, don't want to let them down. And essentially, I decided to pursue this mostly because I just really enjoy barbecue. Be confident inside because you have a brilliant idea. So when you go to the landlord, when you go to refinancing your equipment, when you go to the partners, when you go to your parents, the same way that you raised a million dollars, now you really got to turn it up. Enough of the bad news. I haven't tasted their food yet, and I've never tried Brazilian barbecue. Okay. So in the middle of winter, I've asked Oscar and Joao to throw a back alley party for me and the guys working on the site. I can smell it from the front door. I've lit a fire under their ass, and I think they finally realized that they can't just keep dreaming. But now I want to eat and see what it's all about. It smells great. <laughs> go ahead, go ahead. I don't think that charcoal could make a difference, right? That tastes amazing. Nothing like anything I've ever tasted. Really good. I like it. The barbecue's great. The salads are great. 
I just got to pick it up and eat it with my hands. When someone that really understands about food tries something that he, you cook and enjoy, like they did today, makes me very happy and very confident. Some ribs? Very good. How much do you like it? Oh, I love this stuff. This is chicken and this is quinoa. Wow, I'm sold. They're sitting on a potential gold mine. You're Oscar. You're very good. welcome. Very Thanks good. for coming. You're very welcome. But they need to drum up a lot of money fast and flood the place with it to build out their restaurant. Stay filming the main. How was the meeting with the uh, account manager today? Because without it, they haven't got a hope in hell. It's been over two weeks since I was in Edmonton. Oscar and Joao called me to say that they got some cash from their Brazilian partners who actually flew to Edmonton to hand it over personally. O Oscar é, é jovem, cheio de entusiasmo, tem muito talento. Nós acreditamos no potencial dele e por isso nós acreditamos que o Oscar vai construir um case de sucesso aqui em Edmonton. When I left, there was a ton of construction left to do. When I walk in that door, I want to see a restaurant almost ready to go. They set a deadline to have their soft opening in two days a trial run for friends and family where we can spot the big problems. Fantastic. This place even smells like a restaurant. I'm impressed with these guys. Wow. A lot has happened. They built an entire restaurant in about two weeks. Because the last time I was here, it was an absolute disaster. There was nothing here. But it looks like they put a ton of people and a ton of money to get the trades in here and get them finished. Hey. Hi, David. Well, I see you got one thing. Money, because <laughs> I've never seen this many trades hustling this hard. You guys blew me away. Really? Blew really? me away walking her in here to get this many, this many trades in here and get them hustling. I mean, I was expecting a hundred times worse than this. 48 hours, we can have a restaurant. What are some of the inspections that you still need or permit? Uh, you have an occupancy permit. Well, uh... What about health inspection? Uh, health inspection is scheduled for uh, Thursday morning. Oh, crap. Building a restaurant with tables and chairs doesn't mean anything unless you have permits so you can actually bring paying customers in here. But more than that, we can't train anybody to be a gaucho yet. The guys who cook and serve the meat. No permits, no fire. Time for another reality check. I want you to do a little chart for the next, look at 48 hours, 72 hours, and just chronological order, put the things that you have to check off. And then the eat with highlighter and red pen are those permits. Because without those permits, we can't let anybody in the door, okay? So the city permit? So city permit, that's first. The fire permit? Yeah, so the fire permit. So I've got that lined up for tomorrow. So food handling. Oscar is a kind of guy that doesn't show how much stressful he is. And that's two days from now, right? Yeah. Thursday. But you can see my face that I'm stressed. Okay, that's okay. I'm a shy guy, but I can be much more shy when I'm stressed. We're hinging our 48 hour opening on permits. Mm -hmm. And the most critical permit is the health permit. You can't bring in food and cooks to train no. unless you have a permit yeah. and an inspection to say that you're allowed to bring food and cooks into the building, mm -hmm. right? So what we're doing is we're building a set of a restaurant for this one inspection. So when that health inspector comes, we have to make this place look as good as we can, even if we're not ready. Set the tables. Like, have it so everything, like, is just, it's just waiting for this person. It's like getting that royal seal of approval. Set the stage. Not looking so good right now. Piece of top sirloin with a nice crust of dust is not going to go very far in this town. You need 20, 30, 40 people in here for the next 48 hours, constantly working. Listen, I'll take off my jacket, roll up my sleeves, whatever you need. I'll work for you. Don't shut down. You know? Yeah. Okay? All right. I'll try to keep it together. Yes. Get a trade zone. So if you find copper pipes, you find paint, you find a dolly, you find something that to build the restaurant, Put it in a zone. Let's get all this stuff out the front. Get the cords out. Can you go ahead? Go. So get used to going to go faster, go faster. You think you're good? Okay, go fast. 
In the middle of the cleanup, we have to start training the kids who answered our help wanted ad for gauchos. I'm not sure they know what a gaucho is, but they're here. And since without permits, we can't cook meat, I've picked up some replacements. We're gonna have to make do. It's not sawing, right? It's sliding through. Whoever's got the eggplant, put it down and go into the pineapple. And then you rotate that pineapple to the guy next to you that doesn't have a pineapple. Then what we're yeah, gonna do if we were opening Pampa Fruit Shack tomorrow, we'd be fine. Okay, I can do the, I can do the simple stuff like, t like chairs. You start numbering the tables for me, okay? This has to come this way, yeah? What are these Yeah, for? I'm going to put on the bar. V-Bird, do you have my newspaper? Let's give some of the hands to bring us up more tables, Rob. You've got staff here. Get the staff to move it on the party table. Come on, Joao, you're an owner, not an employee. You do not do tasks anymore from here on in, okay? Okay. This is kitchen stuff, you're gonna delegate. Okay. You're like, hey, I need these swords moved to here. Put okay. the bun rack back there. Chefs delegate. Chefs are great communicators, okay? Okay. That's what I want you to do. Just start doing this, okay? I'm a kind of perfectionist. I like things all the time well done. Sometimes you can't. Sometimes these are not in your hands. So this makes me crazy. It's already six in the evening and there's still tons to do. And that date with the inspector is coming like a freight train. So, table one. I want to work with Oscar because he needs to have a more realistic idea of how long things take. And Joao has to stop doing everything himself or Papa's gonna suffer. If she gives me the okay in the morning, we can prep in the afternoon. We can have our uh, soft opening in the evening. No, nah, we can do it. This guy's on Mars. It'll be a miracle if we can make it. Today is Pampa's soft opening, if we pass the inspection. Last night, we hauled ass, and the health inspector's here, but she's asked everyone to leave the building, except the owners. Oh, okay, wonderful. Thanks for coming this morning. Appreciate it. Thank you. What's happening here? Okay, um, there's this piece that we're missing to fire up the control of both hoods. Health inspector said, no hoods, no permit. End of story. Shit. Because everything else looks great. Tables, chairs, servery set up, the mill workers finished the bar, right? Cold kitchen is done, dish pit looks great, back kitchen is good, the painters are getting finished, the artwork is up. And all you're missing is that piece. Yes. Man, oh man. The good news is that they think they can get that piece this afternoon. The bad news, the health inspector can't come back till the morning. Oh, okay. So that's it. We have to push the soft opening until tomorrow. And that's tough. Now we'll only have one day, not two, to fix any problems before the grand opening for paying customers. We're on hold. I'm going back to my hotel. But I'm barely gone and the boys call me in a panic. What the hell is this? They've got the missing part, but something big has gone wrong. Oh, Jesus. What is going on? The larger hood went up, or got turned on. As soon as it got turned on, all the power surged, and it just blew the breaker. Well, we can't get the health inspector without that, that hood working. That's correct. The health inspector's not going to pass us if the power keeps going off. That's correct. If this does not get resolved, I'm going to have to call her and cancel her visit. Right? I mean, and that means no one's coming. That means no one's coming, yeah, exactly. Shit. You're gonna do this, okay? I'm not here to see you fail. Every restaurant I do, it happens to everyone. You got it, you're this close. And I'll tell you, staff right now have just gotta see you. Smiles on, excited, getting everyone ramped up. This stuff happens to every person that opens a restaurant. I need Oscar to pull it together and not let his staff see his panic and fear. Failure is not an option for us. We are gonna win. We're gonna have the best restaurant in Edmonton. We are gonna have one of the only Brazilian steakhouses in the country, okay? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> The electricians worked all night to fix the power issue, and I'm told everything seems to be working, and the health inspector has just left. We got it. We got the permit. Right on. We're in business. You got charcoal? Yes. You got a match? Yes. Okay, let's burn that bad boy off, okay? Awesome. 
That's the speed that we work, okay? Boom. There's only eight hours until the doors are open. It's balls to the wall, and I have to start training those gauchos. I have no experience, but I do have training in working with pineapples and with eggplants and oranges. <laughs> Just move it up, next one down, right? Right? Fast, 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 right? Do my hands move slow. Do my hands move fast. They have to get in high gear, or we don't have a hope in hell. Get everything out of the bag, put the straps in the box, no. cut all the bags, put the bags in, and boom, boom, boom. I'm assuming that I'm probably the oldest one here, right? Never let someone old, like an old like me, ever work faster. You want to crush me, dominate me, put me in the old age home. That's what you want to do. Skewer, skewer, skewer. Okay. The art of Brazilian barbecue is how to cut the meat, how to put it on the skewer, knowing the spaces over the charcoal, then working the fire. Oscar, what we need is one demo on this. One clean cut. That's the demo. Who's going to cut? Two. Who's the cutter? The I'm gonna be the cutter? Yeah, you're going to be the cutter. Now we show us one skewer, bro. It's fat side up, and then we fold it half moon shape like this. And this is the dangerous part, right? Right. Now, where, see how he's steadying right in here, Roy? He's taking his right in his hip, right? So you got to make sure that that doesn't slip away, OK? That's pretty good, actually. Not well bad. done, guys. It's really Not good. Not bad, really huh? Good. You now are training him. OK. OK? So both of you guys, skewer, skewer, skewer. It's all about getting Oscar and Joao to be leaders now. I know there's barely any time, but they've got to get their staff to do the work. Who's loading the salad bar? Two, two people. Two people? Yeah. OK. What I want you to do, and I don't want you to touch a thing, and just with a piece of tape, start labeling where the salads are. Remember how you mapped it out? Mm -hmm. But no one knows where it goes. I want you to be able to step away and you not loading the salad bar. Okay. Go, take the potato salad to the container that says potato salad. Okay. Take, take the baby octopus, the baby octopus, mm -hmm. the cheese, the croutons, mm -hmm. the pickles, whatever it is, I want you to be able to delegate, okay? Okay. Perfect. Got that? Go. Okay. Delegating is about getting more done faster. That's it. But now there's another problem to deal with. We just found out that the soft opening will be tonight, and only 39 people can come tonight. So you don't know what to do. What can I do to bring more people in? I need about 120. Listen, use your social networks. Put out the calls. We need to see this room humming. 30 people is like a, it's like a. I can do it by myself, 30. 30 people is like a staff meal. We can yeah. get Zhao to do it. He'll do it like backyard barbecue, OK? OK. We'll get on it. Thank you. Jeez. I don't know. Do you know what I need? Right now, take a table like this, Oscar, with uh, your Leanne, right? Yeah. Leanne, set me one table, exactly how you want the table to look. Okay. And then Leanne, you teach the next person, the next person, the next person that comes in. Cool. What are the reservations at? 89. 89? 89. Perfect. There's 90 people on. They'll pick up another 30 in the next couple hours. It's the whole front of the dining room. That's what I need to see for a soft opening. You're now in charge. Okay. Just put the mise en place on the table so when people start coming in, all hands, boom, 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 boom. The day has evaporated, and the soft is just minutes away. Well, my guys, right, because they haven't trained enough they look how much salt they put on this thing. I seriously hope Oscar can keep it together. Uh, we didn't get to train. One minute. I mean, it's just go, 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 get the doors open. The permit's here. Eight hours ago, we got our permit eight hours ago. All of these people have heard about me opening this restaurant six years ago. The expectation is huge. It's huge. It's been a roller coaster, but Pampa's soft opening has finally arrived. Susanna hustled and managed to get 120 friends and family to show up at the last minute. My tactic will be to stand back and watch the flow tonight so I can get a sense of where the holes are and fix them before we open for paying customers tomorrow. The first thing I'm noticing is that guests are looking confused. When customers come in, that's when you have to start selling the sizzle. Everyone should know what's going on, what to be expected. I want to see them understand it, and I'm not really getting that. People are kind of just sitting down. People are sedate. No one's even talking to each other. It's kind of weird in here. And it doesn't help that the salad bar looks sad and half empty. How are you doing for salad bar prep? I have 
let's say 40% ready, but I still have to mix the salads, some salads that are ready, but I have to mix them. Oh, I'm a grill cook, but I'm helping here in the back kitchen because we need to pull all the salads out. Go ahead, yeah, done. Uh, plate, a, plate a small one with this and put this on top. But I'm glad Joao is finally leaning on his staff for help. So you have to cut the chicken and mix all these ingredients, okay? But the workflow back here is total chaos. Back in the dining room, almost the whole restaurant is being seated and still no one knows what to do. And no one has any food. Oscar, what's the word on me? Let's, uh... Um... Typically, we wait till the people go to the salad bar, then we begin to meat service. We should get them at least moving, huh? Okay. What Oscar's saying is they don't typically start cooking the meat until people go to the salad bar. Start your romance now. Start talking about the salad bar, get people up, tell them what Brazilian Steakhouse is all about. Not even just send them up, bring them up to the salad bar, talk to them about it. And as soon as you get some salad on the plate, the gauchos are going to come around with some of the most amazing meat you've ever tasted. Whenever you're ready to start meat service, I'd love to get in the salad bar. We have a one-of-a-kind salad bar. You guys are more than welcome to go up right now. Yeah. Oh no, ladies. I didn't mean every table at once. You really need time to train your staff, especially with a concept like this. Everything has to be choreographed perfectly, or else you get chaos and a total mess. It looks like a bad Brazilian wedding going on right now. All I can hope for is there's no midnight seafood buffet. Well, it didn't take long for this salad bar to look like crap. A real quick lesson, can I borrow this? Everybody listen up, please. This is fundamental. Knife always like this against your leg, okay? Not like this, like this, or talking like this. Always here, you can cut one of us, you can cut one of yourselves. Kind of everything's new, so it's hard. I don't really know everything that well, but I'm trying my best. Great, I've got nervous newbies with knives. Can we send our first round of uh, gauchos out? We certainly will right away here. Gauchos, gauchos, Same gauchos, gauchos. let's go. Guys, Watch your knives, boys. Watch your knives. Okay. Uh, I think once I get over the fear of stabbing you folks, it's going to go a lot sooner for me. <laughs> oh, that is not what I wanted to happen. <laughs> that's fine. Would you like a different one at all? No, or? that's great. Okay. Aw, oh, jeez, this knife work is scaring me. And the meat is looking either completely dried out or raw. Yeah, He didn't overcook anything outside, so it was a little better outside a couple of weeks ago. I wouldn't be too happy if I was paying 45 bucks for a plate right now. What's the feeling on the dining room? What's going on? Um, there's definitely not enough meat. We gotta get more people out on the meat. I mean, mind you, we're not, we're not gonna see the 100 people at one point like this. Like, this is overwhelming. Okay, listen, Oscar, tell you what's gonna happen. You are gonna see the 100 people. You've got a back dining room that can hold a party of 50. You've got an alley here that you can put two 20 tops in. This is a 12, a 10 and a 10. People in Edmonton all eat at that same time, okay? Don't make excuses. Figure a way to serve 180 people at once. Okay. Don't limit yourself. You're talking the difference of doing $2 million a year or $6 million a year. You got a gold mine here. Don't limit yourself. Okay. Okay. And something very important has just come up. I don't really eat beef and I don't eat pork. <laughs> so, you know, if they don't have fish, I'll, just, I'll stick to the salad bar. If you were not eating meats, $45 might be a bit steep. I call it the veto factor. When you're deciding where to go for dinner and one person says they don't eat meat, guess what? You're not going to Pampa. Tomorrow, I'm going to convince the boys to put out some options. It could cost them big if they don't. Wow. Here's what I saw. Start with the grill, the meat. Um, gauchos, you get trained for what, 15 minutes today? Pretty in, in the middle that, of, yeah. yeah, if that. Yeah. These guys are really hustling for you. Yes. Everyone wants to see you succeed. Skewering is just getting used to it, yeah. right? So more training for them. So, but we got the damn doors open. Yes, we okay? did. 
salad bar. It just didn't look pretty. It didn't look refined. I don't like way that the signs look. I don't like the way that the, the salad bar looks. We didn't have time. To it's, listen, it's finesse, right? I really think that we, we did a kind of miracle today to prepare everything in five hours, six hours. I think we did a miracle today. Yes, you shot out a miracle of 50 salads in five hours. But listen, tomorrow it's paying customers. No mistakes. That's why we invited our friends and family, because they love us and they'll still love us tomorrow. But paying customers won't love us. They won't come back and they'll say bad things about us. My goal is with you is to get you away from the grill. And the only way we're going to do that is get you to have confidence in your gauchos and the guys that are on that grill for you. I want you to start seeing the big picture. You should be the salad bar ambassador. You should spend most of your time out there. You know everything that's out there that's on it. When you talk about it, you talk about it with passion. People are wandering around not knowing what the hell is going on. You built a beautiful restaurant, but it's nine tenths of the equation. You don't succeed without that other one tenth. But one tenth is your passion, your knowledge about this food, that everyone understands it when they go out the door. Go home tonight, get some sleep. We got a lot of work to do, boys. A lot of work. I'm out. Yesterday's soft opening exposed every wart and pimple on Papa's ass. There's no way I'd pay 45 bucks for what I saw last night. Tonight, we open the doors for paying customers. I need Oscar and Joao to trust their crew tonight and get out onto the dining room floor. As owners, their passion and their stories are what's going to bring Papa to life for their customers. How you doing? Good morning, dude. So good? <laughs> yes. Gauchos, who's your gauchos? How are you going to hit your temperatures today? What are you gonna do it with this? Yeah. With this. Oh, thank you. Yes, you yes, get one, yes, two. Yes. Gauchos have thermometers. We don't waste money anymore. Check your temperatures. What's the internal temperature for beef? What's the internal temperature for chicken? What's the internal temperature for pork? Those questions I want answers to by the time the first spit goes on. That salad bar needs help. Yesterday, the salad bar just didn't have Pizzazz. Give me one of the kids. Okay. We're gonna decorate the salad bar, make it beautiful. Sure. Is that good? Okay. How about a little citrus bling, we garnish, and some palm leaf to boost the presentation and make it look fresh. Get a case of limes, get lemons. Gotcha. Make it beautiful, Vlad. You know that? Now it's time to add something other than meat to this meat palace. Lopez. Hey. Finally, $40 worth of seafood. Now, what we can do is we'll take the rack, emergency, set it in, brush the coals over. The servers get someone that doesn't eat meat, we get them still for 45 bucks, right? You know, I guess the mentality is in Brazil, right? It's just beef country, so this never, never consider this, but this is a fantastic idea, I must say, it really is. It's minus 30 tonight, and we are hoping that everyone can come. Uh, we already have 142 uh, reservations. But here's my big challenge. Joao is doing a fine dice on carrots. That's for his crew to be doing. I've got to get him out on the floor tonight, selling that salad bar. Papa's salad ambassador. As for Oscar, he's got to be out on the floor too. Just listen up, you got to really help me with this. Oscar is, doesn't want to leave the grill, okay? It's really technical to do Brazilian barbecue. This is kind of your boot camp. I brought you pens and paper. Talk with each other about temperatures. How long does it take to cook? Does it cook more on the bottom or more on the top? How much salt is on it? So the more I can help you with this, the better I can get Oscar away from the grill and out in the dining room where he needs to be. Years later and a million and a half dollars in, Pampa is finally going to open. And at 5 p.m. sharp, the first customers start flowing in. The salad bar, it looks a lot better, but I still don't have a salad bar ambassador. Oscar's running the show in the kitchen. I can understand why owners have trouble letting go but these guys have to tonight. 
Brazilian barbecue is a new concept for this crowd. And even more than usual, the paying customers need to see the face behind the concept. I'll give Oscar and Joao a few more minutes. Last night at the soft opening, the gauchos were a disaster. They were slaughtering meat, not serving it. Let's hope there's been some improvement. Oh, not only is the knife work way better, but each and every piece is slicing off juicy and perfectly cooked. By now, Oscar's got to trust his crew. It's time for me to go get him and Joao out of the kitchen. Hey, Tom, I really need this. This is a big favor. Good job, guys. Awesome job. You guys look great. Get this round of beef on. Okay. 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 Do a once around the room. I really need you floating around the front. And really being the face of the restaurant. The story behind that is, in Brazil, it's, it's very common. It's actually even wider, believe it or not. Exactly. Tell the story. People will be talking about it for days. I'd like to congratulate you. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This is the quinoa tabouli. Have you eaten this before? No, I haven't. Have you eaten quinoa before? No, I haven't. No, so this is a per Peruvian grain that is really good. Look at that. Joao's finally out here too. I don't eat a lot of red meat, so I was wondering, do you have any fresh fish on the menu? We do. We do. Uh, we've got some salmon on the grill and some jumbo shrimp, so they'll be bringing that out for you guys as well. Awesome. Wow, they smell amazing. Nice lemon, butter, very good. Every diner in this room is getting their money's worth, whether they eat meat or not. The carrots infuse it in bread, in wine. Oh, really? And uh, sparkling wine and a little bit of... The eight-year-old dream may finally be coming true. And I worked so hard, so hard for two years. A lot of people have never experienced an authentic Brazilian steakhouse before, so you have to explain the concept and how things work. Oscar and Joao went and talked to a lot of tables, which I appreciated. It's always nice to see the person behind the idea and the vision. It's good. It's very good. I'm very, very happy and proud to see this long project coming to uh, this excellent ending. And we love him and we knew that this was going to be like this. The things that I learned with David here is how to do some things in a different way. And this was really important. And for him to come and say, you're doing this wrong, this could be better. It, it does challenge you to the core, but I needed that. And we needed that boost and he managed to deliver that. Three weeks ago, I met two owners in a construction site who needed a serious reality check. To get Papa's doors open, they both had to come down to earth, trust their staff, and change from dreamers to restaurant owners. You got this far on your dream, but I'm gonna tell you one thing. The dream stops now. You're not cooking for the dream anymore, you're cooking for customers, okay? You got the hottest steakhouse in town. David, thank you for coming. Cheers. Cheers to you. You did a great job. Wow. Well, thanks for coming. Amazing job. Everyone's loving the food. Keep up the good work, okay? okay. And just come out of your shell a little bit, okay? <laughs> Maybe you can help them with that. Yeah. Sure. Right. Okay, I gotta go. Obrigado, David. <laughs>